Hello everybody, welcome back. In this video, I am going to show you another new feature of Oracle integration, which is a native object storage action that will help us to invoke OS OCI object storage without explicitly creating the REST connection. So let's look into it and, and see how we can connect to the object storage with the help of native action called object storage action. So we can natively invoke OCI object storage from an integration without the need to configure an explicit REST adapter connection in Oracle integration two. We, if we need to fetch some files, we need to list the buckets from OCI object storage. We have to use the REST connection. We have to use the REST adapter configure the security policies, a lot of things we have to do. But now Oracle integration three has simplified the way we connect object storage. So they have given a native action inside integration, which is named as OCI object storage that allows you to interact with object storage without any extra rest connection. So uh, with that OCI object storage, we can perform various operations at the bucket level as well as the object level. The first thing first, we can, we can create buckets. We can list buckets from OCI object storage. We can delete buckets that is at the bucket level. And then on the object level, we can upload objects. We can download objects. We can delete objects. We can list objects. So these are the these are the functions that we can perform with that OCI object storage action. So what are the prerequisites to invoke OCI object storage from integration? There are something that you have to configure in your OCI. The first thing first, you have to create a dynamic group with the following matching rules with resource dot ID equals to, you have to pass integration OAuth client ID. And I will show you how do we get this integration OAuth client ID and then create this dynamic group in my, in, in the next few minutes. And then we have to add two policies to grant access to OCI object storage. We have to allow, the first is allow dynamic group, the dynamic group name that we create to manage object family in compartment, compartment name where my buckets is ready. Bucket is created and allow dynamic group, dynamic group to inspect compartments in compartment, compartment name. So these are the two uh, uh, policies that we have to create. And then third, we have to make sure our cloud tenancy uses the ID, identity domain, not the traditional or old IDCS. So make sure your make sure your uh, uh, OCI has the domains feature, not the IDCS. That is important. Now, as a use case, I'm going to show you, we have a OCI object storage. Under OCI object storage, let us consider I have a bucket. And under that bucket, we have various objects, object one, object two, and object M. Then I want to push all those objects to my SFTP. So I will create a scheduled Oracle integration that will use the native object action to list the objects from a bucket. I will loop over the objects and download object one by one using the OCI object net action. And then we'll use the FTP adapter to write the file on the SFTP. So in this use case, I'm not gonna to I'm not going to read the file, but I'm going to push the file as is to my SFTP. But if you want to read the content, you can also do the same. Let's go and let's look at first, how do we do the prerequisites? The first thing first, make sure you go to your integration instance details page and you get this service name, which is my OIC Gen 3 3403. As the next step, what you have to do, you have to go to your identity and security go to go to the domains 
under domain choose your default domain and you have to choose the domain where your integration instance is created go to the oracle cloud services and then search this name that we have copied okay i guess i can copy this and then search it you see oic gen3 this is my instance name the application is created in my uh, domain and then you see this is the OAuth client ID that you have to copy. That is the first thing that you have to keep at some place. Then go to the domain and then, sorry, go to the default domain and under that go to the dynamic groups and you have to create a dynamic group. Let's say DG1, DG1 and then you choose match any rules defined below. And then like we have given resource dot ID equals to that ID, sorry, that ID. Okay, I have not copied, but let's say uh, this ID is like this and then create. I'm not creating it because I have already created with name DG. You see DG. Resource dot ID, this is created. Okay, that is first thing. Now, you have to again go back to the domains and then you have to create some policies. Go to the policies and I chose the same compartment where my object is storage, bucket and integration resides. And then I have created that policy using that option create policy, given a name of the policy, the description and then to the manual editor and then given both the policies here. So here this is the policy that I have created. You see allow dynamic group DG to manage object family in compartment integration. Allow dynamic group DG to inspect compartments in compartment integration. So I have given both the policies. So these are the few things that you have to make sure it is completed. Now, once that prerequisite is completed, we are good to create an integration. So I will create an integration here. Schedule based and let's say object storage to FTP and create. And here I will use a action called object storage where it is, you see OCI object storage. I will drop it here and let's say list objects. And here you can see select the resource type you want to manage. Whether you want to manage back buckets. On the manage bucket, you can perform operation create bucket. You can do list buckets. You can do delete objects. And then manage object, that function that you want to do on the objects. Upload object, download object, delete object, and list object. So I will use list object. When you choose list object, you have to choose compartment where your bucket resides, let's say integration and then which bucket you want to work upon. So under which bucket you want to manage your object or list object, let's say test bucket that I have created here. I will show you. You see test bucket. Under test bucket, we have two files, big file and search response, fine. So continue and then finish. So this list file will give you the list of all your objects. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use a for each here. For each and let's say list objects. Okay, objects, repeating element. Current object and come out okay and then under this i will again use the oci object storage action let's say download object again i will use manage object download object select compartment select bucket okay continue and then finish Now, under that mapper, you have to tell the name of that 
object that you want to download that you set in the template parameter object name that you can take from your current object, which is your name. But if you want to set some other things uh, dynamically, you can set here as well, right? Let's say bucket name, validate. and close Link is open. then use ftp connection yeah. okay. write file continue write file binary you have to put your slash home slash user slash aj the directory file name i'm not mapping here content okay let's say abc for now continue I will choose no. I'm not reading the content of that object. If you want to read the content, maybe you have to use that CSV or whatever. No. Continue. And finish. Okay. And then here, under that write file, you can see ICS file, uh, download object response, get object response, and it will give you the stream reference that you can map to this reference. And under that outbound FTP header type, you can pass the name here. Validate. And then close. Okay, that's it. Now let's try to enable business identifier and then test your integration. Activate, debug, and then activate. So now let's run this and run. All right. So you can see for each running, for first iteration, two iteration, Process completed successfully. Let me take you to my, this thing, FTP and refresh the directory. And here you should see both the files, big file and search response. So this is how you can use native OCI object storage action to connect your object storage, get the data and then process the data further. So guys, I hope you find this useful. Thank you. Bye-bye.